Okay, in this video, video 9, what we want to look at is the forces acting on a mass on an inclined plane that's being pulled by a second mass over a pulley. Now we're going to assume here first that the inclined plane is frictionless. In a later problem, we'll assume it's not. Also, we're going to make the assumption that the pulley is massless and the rope is also massless. Because those change the problem a little bit. Uh, if you remember in video 8, we found that when there's a weight on an inclined plane, it has two components. A component that is perpendicular to the inclined plane or ramp, and a component that is parallel. So, much like all problems, we want to pick a coordinate system. As we usually do for an inclined plane, we're going to assume that the positive x direction is up the ramp and the positive y direction is perpendicular and above uh, the ramp. So if we were to label the forces on the two objects, which is what we want to do next, on mass number one, we have a weight force going down. We have a normal force going up and we have a tension that's pulling it up the ramp. Uh, if there was a friction, it would oppose that motion, but there isn't, so we're going to leave it out. For mass 2, there's going to be the tension up, which has the same magnitude as the tension pulling mass 1 up the ramp, because the tension is the same everywhere in the rope, and you're going to have a weight 2. So if this is weight 1, we'll call this weight 2. So just to get it out of the way, the weight force that's parallel to the ramp is going to be equal to uh, m1 times sine of theta. And the weight force perpendicular to the ramp is going to be equal to m1 cosine of theta. I derived this in video number 8, but the way I just remember it is that normally I think of y components as being sine. Uh, here it's opposite. So here it's um, the y component is cosine and the x component is actually sine. So let's draw, well we've drawn the free body diagram, but let's turn that into equations of motion. So we're going to apply Newton's second law to both objects separately. So here we're going to, now let me draw the forces again very quickly. We've got a normal force, a weight force, specifically weight 1. We've got a tension here. And here we've got a tension on the way up, and we have, I don't know if I have your attention, but I have these tensions. It makes me feel better, and we have a weight force on the way down. So let's do object number one first. So object number one, the net force is going to equal um, the tension. By the way, we have to define a positive direction. We're going to assume this is the direction of positive acceleration. So it's going to equal a tension minus the component of this weight force that is parallel to the ramp. Uh, the normal force does not affect this because it's balanced out by the perpendicular component of the weight force. And that's going to be equal to m1 times a. Now if I rewrite that, the weight force parallel if you remember, is equal to, uh, whoops, sorry, mg, this is m1, and that's going to be times the sine of theta is going to equal m1a. So that's the equation of motion for the first object. For the second object, the net force acting on object number two has somewhat less forces it's going to be m2g minus t. Now this part tends to throw people because the weight force here we're writing as positive. Normally you think of down as being negative, but because we've defined clockwise around the pulley as positive, this is positive and the tension is negative. And this has to equal m2 times a. So if I solve this for t, the tension is going to be equal to um, m2g minus m2a. As you often want to do, you pick a variable we're going to solve for. I want to solve for the acceleration first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tension, 
I'm going to plug it in there. So instead of T, I'm going to write M2G minus M2A minus M1G sine of theta equals M1. A. What I like to do is I like to group like terms, so I like to put the A's on one side and the G's on the other side. So I'm going to group the G's on the left here, M2G minus M1G sine of theta. I'm going to group the A's on the other, so M1A plus, because when I bring this over it comes plus, M2A. Now, I like to factor out the G or the A, so I'm going to get M2 minus M1, so 1, sine of theta times G, and over here I'm going to get uh, M1 plus M2 times A, so if I solve that, I'm going to get A equals M2 minus M1 sine of theta over m1 plus m2. So I have solved for the acceleration of the system. It's expressed only in terms of the two masses and the angle of the incline. Oops, almost forgot the g. Uh, and it's some fraction of the acceleration due to gravity. The biggest this can ever be is g. Um, Let's talk about some limiting behavior with this. First of all, if, and I'll use purple, M1 gets huge, huge Rochester, huge for those of you who know what that means. If M1 gets huge, if this gets really, really big, and this gets really, really big, assuming even if this was um, zero, that wouldn't matter, uh, you're, you're going to get an acceleration that is essentially zero. And that makes sense because this big block is huge compared to this, so this dinky little force isn't really going to, to move it that much. If, on the other hand, M2 was huge, huge, Rochester huge, uh, you would find that um, the top would get really close to a huge number, the bottom would get really close to a huge number, and this would be 1, and you'd get an acceleration that was G. So if this was huge and this was 0, it would essentially be the same as if you just dropped it. Uh, so that's what happens if M1 gets really big or M2 gets really, um, really big. So let's solve for the tension. Well, to get the tension, if you recall, we wrote that tension equals M2G minus M2A. So... So, if I start plugging in, that's the same as M2G minus, now I'm just going to take this and multiply it by M2, M2 times M2 minus M1 sine of theta over M1 plus M2 times G. I'm going to factor out M2G, and what you get is tension equals 1 minus m2 minus m1 sine of theta over m1 plus m2 times m2g which is kinda cool because what that means is you get this is some fraction some number between 0 and 1 of m2 times g so if I was to plug in some numbers again, if on the one hand uh, M1 was really huge, so let me just do this in purple again. If M1 is huge, you're going to get, okay, a bottom that's pretty huge. And so if M1 is huge, you essentially wind up with this and this counting as zero and winding up with m1 sine theta over m1 or really 1 minus sine of theta. So if theta is 0 degrees, this is 0, you wind up with the tension being equal to m2g which is the same as if this was tied instead of tied to a really big mass.
So if M1 is really, really big, it may as well not move. The tension is going to be the same as if you connected it to a wall. So that makes sense. And if M2 is really huge, um, you wind up with uh, this being effectively zero, this being effectively zero, one minus one or zero, you wind up with basically no tension, which makes sense because this mass hardly slows it down at all. It may as well not even be there. So you get a tension that's uh, equal to zero. It's also worth talking about what happens if theta is close to zero degrees. In other words, if this is inclined all the way so it's flat, uh, what you're going to wind up then is essentially 1 minus m1 over m1 plus m2 times m2g. Now if you do your cross multiplication and add, you wind up with m1 plus m2 minus m1 over m1 plus m2 times m2g. So the m1 and the m1 cancel out and you're effectively left with m1 m2 over m1 plus m2 times g, which is the same as if you uh, look at problem number seven that I had on here uh, for horizontal table. Sorry for the video magic. I just fixed a, uh, a little typo here. So it's m2 and m2 that cancel out, leaving you with the equation for horizontal table. Uh, the last thing that we want to do is we want to plug in some actual numbers here. And that was an M1 of 5 kilograms and an M2 of 10 kilograms. So when I plug those into here, um, you should get uh, 1 half G. And when you plug them in for the tension equation right here, you should get a tension that is 49 Newtons. Sorry I didn't show you plugging them in but I thought the screen was getting a little uh, cluttered and uh, I'm hoping that you can check this yourself. So this was a video to figure out the uh, acceleration of two blocks where one block is on an inclined plane and the other is hanging over a pulley pulling it down. Uh, this is a frictionless problem. We'll soon be moving to problems with friction. Uh, it'll simply be one more force keeping in mind that the weight force has a component perpendicular to the ramp and parallel to the ramp. Um, I hope that you find this helpful, as always.